So you ask, what are the are the challenges? So there, there is basically challenges at the analytical side to, the, to be able to determine how many of these proteiforms is act, are actually present in a sample. And then I think the more difficult um, downstream challenge is to, to ask, what are these proteiforms doing? I mean, it could be that the cell produces slight variants of proteins um, that actually have, have the same function, but that's certainly not always the case. So from the analytical challenges, they are met by predominantly mass spectrometry. Uh, there is a whole field emerging that's referred to as top-down proteomics where people measure intact proteins and can detect differences between different proteoforms that are derived from the same gene. Um, and there is attempts to use what is referred to as bottom-up proteomics where the proteins are, are cut into pieces and then each, each piece is analyzed in a mass spectrometer to piece together then to infer which proteoforms are present in a sample. Both the top-down and the bottom-up approach are not able to display at present the whole complexity of the proteiform space. So there is a lot of analytical work still required to advance this, the definition, basically the inventorizing the proteiforms. Then on the, on the functional side, the challenges are that many of these proteiforms are very, very similar to, to each other. So for instance, the protein may differ only by one phosphorylation site from another proteform or by the deletion of, of a few amino acids at the amino terminal region through process, to processing. And it is of course difficult to, to envisage functional assays that would determine whether these two proteoforms, um, which may be very similar, uh, have the same, fun the same biological function. So the way this is usually approached is to ask, do pro is, is it to approach this from a statistical point of view and say, if we have samples uh, where, which, for instance, cells in different states, for instance, disease associated, more changes have occurred in a cell, for instance, a cell is a tumor cell compared to the normal state, can we see a change in the distribution of proteiforms uh, that is systematically occurring when a cell goes from a normal to a tumor state, and then we would assume, based on, on basic statistical argument, that something that happens repeatedly between two cell states, that this has some functional significance. But again, this is also a field of research in proteomics that is very much in its early infancy, and I think there's a lot of fundamental discoveries to be made. 